The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here on this 24th of October. Wow, a week to go and we wrap up October. That candle is going to be so important. Dow's down 52, SMBs up 3.75. I had spoken about this uh, maybe for about three weeks now. I've been saying this is a very diverse market in the sense that there are some stocks even within the same sector that are doing well and others are doing very poorly and because of that you can see that's the trading range that we've been in why look even today you've got a microsoft up 2.81 and at the same time if i can just find it give me one second i moved everything around here let me see if i can get this right here it's in a bit of a rush had to just do a quick errand, came back in time, but uh, barely. Uh, let me just see. Um, all right, Intel comes out with earnings uh, today, I believe it is, after the bell. That's going to be important because yesterday you had LAM Research coming out with fantastic earnings. It was looking terrible as a chart. I'm coming back to the down in a moment. I just want what I'm, I'm thinking about it. LRCX, LAM Research. Look, yesterday it was down the 233 area. Uh, it had been struggling. It was near the all-time high, but it, it was struggling. Sideways from 244.98, pulls back to the 225 area, goes to 244.58, 40 cents below the all-time high. I mean, how many times have we seen that this year? It's just incredible. This is a daily. I can show you stocks that have monthly charts that have come back to within pennies of the previous half after a sharp decline. Hey, wait a minute. Now, all of a sudden, it's up 20, 25 points. It was up 10 points. Uh, then it was up 12. Then this morning, it looked like it was up 14 or 15. Now it's up 25. I think this is short covering plus some new buying. I'm not sure just how much new buying there could be at all-time highs. I don't really care how, how convinced you are. And this is only a leg C in the monthly, but I'm sure no one else is doing a chart formations like I'm doing. So they don't know this is a leg C. Should go to a leg D in the chart methodology. But wait a minute. Um, all-time high? I think this is more short covering, and some people who are maybe adding to positions saying we'll treat it as a trading position. I'm not sure there'll be brand new buyers of this particular RAM, RAM research, um, RAM research semiconductors. Probably, probably one of the leaders in the group. I believe Taiwan Semiconductor um, is probably um, a better example of a company that's got orders that we can actually tell because it's it's public orders that are huge orders coming in hasn't yet gone to a new recovery high although at 50.78 it is just a, an eye blink away from the all-time high of 51.21 so we're watching that but at the same time as xilinx in the same sector of semiconductors down a dollar 14 and 92.64 all time high was 141 back in April of, of this year. A huge move up from the 60s to 141, and now it's giving a chunk of it back. So that's what I'm saying. And now let's look at UTX, United Technologies. This is a Dow stock. Beautiful, up $1.79. Broke out, broke out, as I mentioned yesterday. It was breaking out of the downtrend, the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Boom, goes to an the 144, you have an exact example, September of 2018, 144.15 drops 44% to $100 at, on, in December of 2018, and within months, it goes all the way back to 144.40, 35 cents higher, and then it drops sharply down to the 120s, now it's at 141. But wait a minute, that's, that's United Technologies. Caterpillar is a deep cyclical and it's down $2.22 today at 133.14, being repelled from its Chapman Wave inside track weekly and monthly, very long-term 
repellent zone. Look how many times it's been repelled right in that area. How do charts know on a diagonal where there's resistance? I that to me is always just like a miracle. I have a I have a, a theory. It's not one that I'm sure that uh, we could discuss in terms of um, mathematics because it has to do more with emotion. And it has to say that at a certain emotional point, the emotion runs out. And it depends where your starting point is, but it's kind of an equidistant move to the upside very often. And look, you can see that, yeah, look, that move uh, back from in, in Caterpillar, back from the low of the week of the 5th of May of this year at 118, screams up to 140.62 the week of the 19th of July, then pulls back sharply, and then it runs up again about the same amount of points. So you can see that's where it gets a little tired. So it's bumping in, and now the technicals are starting to improve to the point where if it can hold support, if it can hold above um, the 131 to 129 moving average supports and then start another move, maybe this is the one that takes it higher. We'll see. So this is what I'm talking about, the divergence within sectors. All right, let's get back to our story here. Um, so that, that I did the down. Let me just do this again. INDU, just want to show you uh, automatic support levels right here in the 120 minute at 26,746 and 26,000. 729 and 26,725. What was the low today? The low today was 26,725.46. How about that for holding support? If it keeps testing it and then breaks it on the downside, that's not going to be good action. So that's this chart on the right. On the left is actually a daily chart. Um, uh, look at the daily chart right here. This is what I show my subscribers every day. This is a 120 minute chart. Went to a chapter May 5, a leg C could still go down, down to a D. The daily chart is holding the 20 period exponential moving averages. It has to hold it, otherwise, it's a real problem. I'm going to get to a couple of questions that I think are important questions. Remember, I, I like to think of the chapter wave methodology as being one of those techniques. You know how everybody says, oh, you can't get the exact top and you can't get the exact low. Well, we've demonstrated a number of times uh, this year already that we've been able to get almost the almost the, the day of the exact low on June the 3rd. We've got a number of times just about the high. We've got seven points off the high in July using the Chapman Wave methodology. Um, does it get work all the time? Of course, nothing does. I missed some of the, some of the lows because of the manner in which they happened. It just didn't get in at the time. And then we finally got in. We were almost ready to go to the short side, which we are right now. Um, so this is very important. So you can see the MACD in the daily chart is still positive. Look, the, sorry, the MACD itself is holding. You see the green line is above the red line. So that's positive, even though it's turning down. Stochastic now is under 80 percent. That's not very good. And yet my moving averages, let me just go back to this because what I always show. I like to. These are classes that sometimes you'd even have to pay for, but I like to do them here because uh, it just demonstrates what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Otherwise, how on earth would you even know? Um, you're not going to hear anyone talk about it. So here we are. So we had the sell signal over there that was back in April. We had the sell signal uh, bad news cloud cover back in July. We had the sell signal bad news cloud cover in September, and we've just had another one. I'll be back. Bowser Chapman Dow's down 75. SPs up one. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up 
today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, right, folks. So let's just get back to this downtown. 113 SP is now down three. I don't know what the news is, but some kind of news is coming out. You see, at, when I say bad news cloud cover, too many words, four words. I would like to have it just as one word. Um, but that's okay. Uh, or dark cloud. Dark cloud, but then you get into this whole candlestick stuff. Uh, I, don't like to, I don't like to have overlapping word formations. Um, so bad news cloud cover is really important because you will not get the moving averages that I consider to be important. You can use any ones you want as long as you're consistent and use the same ones over and over. In this case, took the green line, the faster moving average is crossing the black line. It took 10 days after the April high to cross badly negative. It took 13 days to cross badly negative um, after the July 15th, July 16th uh, sell signal. Uh, so there we got the exact top, seven points from the top. Um, it took 20, uh, 20, Yes, it took uh, 14 days before it broke decisively with, with the um, September the 12th uh, top. And it's taken uh, up until now one from the high. I should take it from the high. Why is it from there? It should be from there. From It's taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bars, and we've gone on, on the price. We've gone underneath the 14-period moving average in the Dow right now, and yet the faster moving average has not yet crossed negative. Isn't that it? It takes a while. It takes time to do that. So uh, my question, the question I had was from a subscriber was, um, uh, it wasn't very very subtly phrased, and I'm not sure why it wasn't uh, phrased a little bit nicer than that, because we just nailed things. I mean, yesterday we had a spectacular day. Um, uh, the short worked, and the um, and the longs worked uh, fantastically. We, we had uh, longs that were good. In fact, today, one of them between when we got in just a couple of days ago and now, uh, this morning it was up to 17%. Uh, it's pulling back right now, but we've had some really good uh, low, low priced stocks that are doing very well. So I'm um, not sure what the, I'll give you the exact wording, and the wording is um, now, can I find it? I'll find it because I think it's, I, I, you know, I use these things not as criti critiques, 
Uh, let's say, not as criticism, but more as critiques. If it's a critique, it means that it's a kind of a constructive um, articulation of what that person critiquing is thinking is good or bad about whatever they, they're listening or reading to, uh, reading. And in this particular case, it says, you say in Trader's Corner, that's the final, uh, this is my, my daily newsletter, this is the, the synopsis, 12 or 14 or 16 bullet points of it with a paragraph that sums up everything. You don't have to go through all my notes and everything. You just get it summed up in one paragraph. And then I get the bullet points of all these different uh, either what positions we have I'd like to get or things that I always watch every like the GDX. We don't often have GDX or the TLT, but I always put in what's the parameters, etc. So it says, you say in Traders Corner, there's a really good chance of a big market drop over the next few weeks, but you put a super small stop on your on your uh, short position. Um, in the ocean, is the ocean tide going long or short in the short term? And I think I summed it up by saying we're going short. And um, that was my position. At the same time, I was very articulate in saying there are other areas that are working. We want to be long in those areas. I want those areas because in this particular market, you want what can go against the grain. We've got uh, agricultural fund, and it's it's doing it. Did, I mean, it was up huge, um, and th that's what we want. We want to be looking at the market. I don't want to be just be locked in. I, and I consider myself a timer. And sometimes good, sometimes bad, but that's what I do. So we're trying to place that. So the, 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 the I, I'm not sure why this is like a frustrating question. I understand the question and I'll answer the question. The question was that with Microsoft, with Intel coming out, there was a chance that the market at the close yesterday could actually have been up two to 300 points by Friday if everything came right. And if Microsoft had a really good earnings win, but the way I was looking at the market, it looked really difficult for it to do. I saw much more on the downside than the upside. So I ignored the fact that it could have been. I looked at what is. And my assessment is right at this particular time, this, there's a great deal of vulnerability. And this whole political um, um, aspect, don't ignore it, folks. This is serious stuff. I don't think you're, if some of you have not been around maybe for impeachments. I've been around for, this is now the third time. Um, don't take these things lightly because during impeachment hearings, et cetera, the market becomes extremely vulnerable and it can move higher, but at the same time, it becomes even more vulnerable than usual. So. And as Polo says in the den, always a bull market somewhere. And that's really what I'm trying to find for you. And I think I did that pretty well. So I don't know why I didn't get a little pat on the back. But you know the expression that I have, when you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back, that's when you hit the tree. All right. So uh, no patting on the back, just to say that I was doing my best to articulate to get you through the Straits of Gibraltar without hitting the rocks, if you've ever seen the Rock of Gibraltar. So that's, I've always, that's been my mantra ever since I started in the business. Just preserve your capital as much as you can and see if you can get through the Straits and have those really big winners every once in a while, because that's what makes the day. <laughs> All right. Uh, Peak D gets a peak D in the Orly uh, position, O'Reilly Automotive. Earnings must have come out fabulous, up 30 points at 431, all-time high. Leg D in the daily, leg D in the weekly. Uh-oh. And an alternate count, uh, G slash C. I, I just, I can't call it a, a, a C, right? I, I mean, I'm calling it a G slash C. Why? because there's nothing wrong at all about the monthly chart. It had a Chapman Wave instant restart for, for the whole, for about a year and a half now, for the very first time in so many, just, I'd like to say thousands of charts, but it's probably um, in the monthly charts, it's probably many hundreds of charts, not thousands. I've seen instant restarts in just so many, having looked at the, these, 
hundreds and hundreds of charts, so many instant restarts that actually became instant restarts for a new buy mode to another D. Not just a G, but a D. So I'm calling this a G stash C. The MACD and stochastic are holding really well. Uh, this is a good sign. And it's also telling me that in the marketplace of automobiles and automobile repair, a lot more people are still keeping their cars longer because even though cars are lasting longer, oh, I wanted to talk about that. Should I take the time now? Yes. Isn't it ironic? This is the way markets and, and, and things work this way. When the automobile was about at its most unsafe uh, back in the 1970s, when cars rusted out here in the Northeast, in, in a year you'd be rusting out in your car, the speed limits were going higher and higher. Now you've got the cars at the absolute safe, safest in the history of the automobile manufacturing and the speed limits everywhere. Are, and not only that, your insurance is saying to you, hey, we're tracking you. Your GPS is tracking you. You better go slow. Isn't that funny how that works? Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, folks, you can see right here. So, Orly is holding really nicely. Um, uh, that's O'Reilly Automotive. There's uh, parts, etc. People are keeping their cars longer, I believe, and it's costing a lot more to repair. Uh, so, um, they, they're doing well. Applied materials up 3.73 at 54.26. Had earnings, I thought, the other day. Applied materials was the 21st. So it wasn't such a great response. But now all of a sudden, it was horrible yesterday. Capped down sharply, I think, because of Texas Instrument. And now it's up.
And look, it's walking in the weekly chart, it's walking the black line, that's the 14 period moving average, and the nine period moving average is acting as a springboard. So there's your cushion, tests it, goes right down to the 14, and boom, springs right back up. I've got this as a leg C in the monthly chart. And um, so this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, you've got Texas Instrument. Look at that. Just the other day it was at 131. Yesterday, it's 116. Peak E in the weekly chart. So now look at this. Uh, you've got, um, I did LAM research, I'll do it again, LRCX. Uh, Intel, so there's a big move up in LAM research. This is peak, uh, that was a C. So there's A, B, C, E slash C. And there's an E in the weekly chart. And once again, we've got leg C in the monthly chart. So that's the reason why I wanted, I didn't want to get too carried away. I did want to have a short position uh, in the Dow. Um, I, I see this rotational correction going to the upside, not yet to the to the downside per se. In other words, if we were down 1,000 points and we were going sideways now, that would be the rotational correction at the bottom where you're trying to sort out the next winners and the, 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 the next losers. Um, and this is this is a this is a positive at this point because you're really going sideways and doing this big consolidation uh, under the auspices of um, trying to test new highs, failing to test new highs. Everybody's talking about the price of the Dow. Everywhere you see, it's like one percent within one percent of an all-time high. And there has to be one. You know, all I'm saying is that this is a rotational correction. If we can keep this up for a little while longer, we might use up all the energy to the downside, and there'll just be a relief rally to the upside. But we've got to be very, still be very careful here because it's so selective. Uh, I just saw something. Where was it? Let me go back to it over here. Um, this morning when I saw SWK, which is Stanley, this is Stanley. Um, this is Stanley Black and Deck. You remember it was Stanley Tools, and then they amalgamated with Black and Deck, or they were taken over and they've kept the double name. Well, I I don't want to see the tool industry start to take take on water. Um, at this particular point, you've got uh, the weekly chart just going in a trading range. It almost looks like the S&P here. But just a, a wide trading range between 160, I'm sorry, 150, 55 to a low of the 130 area, just chop, chop, chop. And the monthly chart has gone 176 was all time high back in January of 2018. Isn't it amazing? Look, all time high, January of 2018. Tell me what this is. Keep your eye on the right side chart. Look at that. January of 2018, 13,635 plunges to 10,723. I would say a 3,000 point plunge is a plunge. And then rallies all the way back to the 13,250 area, pulls back to 12,400s, and now it's trading at 13,098, trying to knock on the door of the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. What is this? This is the New York Stock Exchange, a very broad New York Stock Exchange. So you can see that January high of 2018 saw a couple of winners going to new all-time highs uh, later on, like in September and October in the down the S&P and, and the NASDAQ. Um, but there were many, I'm looking at a lot of stocks that had not gotten back to the January highs. So this is very interesting, and the New York Stock Exchange. So Stanley Black and Decker, SWK, um, if this can hold the 143-ish area over the coming, uh, let's just call it the next three weeks. If it doesn't break under, if it doesn't go to the 142s, but if, in fact, it just holds sideways and has one more attempt to get to uh, at least the 155s, that'll be very good action. And that's what I'm really looking at, that there's a rotational correction going on. Try to identify what's working. Try to identify what's not working. And at the same time, have a wish list. There are stocks that you'd love to get. For instance, we've missed, I don't know how many times I've wanted it. I think maybe we've had it just for a very brief moment. TMO, which is, what is that? Thermo Fisher Scientific. Was once Thermodynamics, then it was Thermo 
Fisher, and then was Thimma Fisher Scientific. Uh, medical equipment, they've taken over so many companies, and every time it's been a very good success. So it goes to 205, 45 peak C in the weekly chart. It looks very much like it wants to at least attempt a, a chapter wave C1, C2 double top. But in the meantime, uh, the 305 all-time high in the monthly chart has pretty good, pretty good technicals. Not great right now. They're starting to weaken. Price is holding. And this is one of those interminable winners, indomitable spirit it's got. And wait a minute. What about that stock I spoke about some months ago? I said, this stock never seems to have a recession. Everybody needs it. Everybody wants it. Watching it closely because when it tanks, we got to take note of it. What is that? Waste management. Wait a minute, tank, what are you talking about tanking? This has gone straight up with just a, a sideways move for about a, uh, maybe less than a year. And then it even went higher than that. But it's been from the, the 60 area just in 2016, end of 2016, it goes all the way to the high, which I didn't type in. I should have done that, forgot to do it. Let me put it over here. This is the week of the 6th of September. It goes to 121. 121.77. I, I would say a double is pretty good. 121.77, uh, September of 2019. Hey, that's good action. Now it's making the pattern we call the dreaded H. Wait a minute, dreaded H for waste management? Look, what is a dreaded H? Remember, I like to look at straight lines arches or cups, and you get a mixture of the lowercase h, we call the dreaded h, because if you take out the left side low, it could go quite a bit lower. So there's the dreaded h. We also saw it do the y formation, which was very positive. Look. Oh, whoops, wrong, wrong chart. Uh, the y formation right here. Look, tiny little y formation, boom, it breaks out. He has the dreaded, this is an arch formation, and then it broke to the upside. So it has a mix all the time of these patterns. All of a sudden, the MACD is terrible in the weekly chart. Stochastic's down at 45 percent. It is way underneath all the moving averages of importance. It, it, it could very well go lower. So we've got to watch things like waste management, because I've always said that when waste management starts to take more than a breather, Perhaps we're in some kind of a, 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 at least a mini recession or a rotational recession. So we're going to keep watching that. All right. Home Depot, another one, Home Depot. Um, all time high five days ago. It goes to 230, I think it was 37, 38. There. 238.99. Oh, must buy a penny. 238.98. Point ninety-nine, and now it's pulling back. And there's the cup formation, breaks out to a peak D. There's a second peak D. Remember the peak D, the fourth highest peak. We're always looking for those with the pullback. And it's G slash B in the weekly chart and leg C. So looking out, it's still very positive. Shorter term, watch on deeper. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Um, I just want to talk, when we get back, we'll talk about the E-mini with that double top that I was just talking about, the Y formation. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. Look at the struggle. Now the Dow's down 54, S&P is up 2.81. And you've got right here in the Dow, what's the big mover today? Procter & Gamble is up. So I uh, just wanted to show you this. So in the Chamber methodology, remember I looked at that, uh, the Y formation. So you've got the dreaded H. Oh, did I just uh, take that away? Let me just find it again, if I can, right here. Click. Yes. So here's the Y formation. Straight line up, and then you make a little cup formation retest that if it fails that's like the like, like um i call it a drop bucket pattern because it's like a backhoe lifts up all the the gravel in the bucket fails to go higher than that opens the bucket boom everything falls out and here we go we've got um at this particular point when the s p tested the 3000 1175 i think it was yeah 3175 high uh, just after noon, Eastern Time, the technicals were way worse than it was um, in that initial position right there at 11.36. And it said, be careful. And the rule of thumb for me is, in a cup formation, if you take out one-third to a half of the left side high lip to the base, be careful, because there's a good chance you're going to test the bottom. If you break the bottom, there's a good chance you can get a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. Well, we just did that, and you got your one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. Plunges down to 3,000, well, actually 299.75, little double bottom. Rallies, and it goes peak A, peak B. What are we always looking for? Peak C, and it gets to a peak D. Well, we don't know if it's a peak D yet, because it's a two-minute chart, and we're in, the, in, the, in this minute right now. Um, and it, yep, there's a PD. So we've already gotten to the second bar after you made the D. The MACD is good, but nothing like it was back there. Stochastic's good at 85%, but it could be turning down. Got to be careful. So I just wanted to show you. And the last big move in the 10 minute chart was to a peak F. There was that cup formation again with the technicals that were much weaker on that big rally just off the nine o'clock to the high of the day 3015.25 plunges down rallies up to you know like almost a single leg a and you know, my rule of the single leg a that it can fail if it does certain things and here it is really being tested all right so i just wanted to show you the pattern while it was live it's better to do it live otherwise you yeah, nobody can ever be wrong if they're looking back 2020 and saying, hmm, let's see, it went up. Yeah, I'm saying it's going up. You know, you, I, this is predictive, and uh, you stand where you are at any particular time based on the patterns. Um, uh, Basil, when do you reckon we get the furious coda phase? So 
There are a couple of things. I don't want to talk about it now. Maybe tomorrow in Technical Friday, I'll talk about it. Um, there are a couple of things that have to happen. Now, did I know uh, two and a half years ago when I started talking about a coda phase, meaning, uh, how can I best explain it? In a Beethoven sonata or even a symphony, the very, you, you listen, you've got the first movement, usually very long, second movement, movement's pretty long, third movement's fairly quick, usually in waltz scherzo time, then the fourth movement comes along and he tries to get all these ideas in, and you think he's just going to wrap it up, and he goes, bum, and you think it's going to go, bum, five, one, that's how you end code, uh, end pieces. No, what he does is he goes, and he just goes on. And you think, oh, my God, how long is this going to go? And he goes on for a little while. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And all of a sudden, you think, well, this is going to go. He goes, and he goes to another theme. And then before you know it, he suddenly goes, so these coda sections can last a lot longer than your patients, like a rectangle formation, number one. Number two is, this is a period where I've been talking about where capitalism has to go totally awry so that eventually all those people that are talking about socialism and everything really have something to latch onto because capitalism, as long as I can, as everything I've read about and everything I've ever seen, always goes from sparsity or scarcity to excessivity. It's just, there's nothing in between. Why? Because human nature always wants a little more and a little more and a little more and a little more, and that's just human nature. So I don't see how we could end this without every newspaper having front page headlines saying, Dow reaches record level, whatever it is going to be the major market index uh, of uh, the fashionable index. And that's the way it's going to be, just like in 2000. I just don't see it ending after 10 years, just fizzling out. So I do believe that there's a coda phase to come. The whole coda phase, the excitement of the coda phase lasts between three and six months. You go from pretty much just talking about it a little bit to people you've never even heard of coming out and your, and your grandparents or relatives you've never even spoken to for ever suddenly calling you up to say, what do I buy? What do I buy? And we haven't had anything like that. So we've got a caller on the line. Let me see. Let me go right there. Thank you for that reminder. I don't see it. Is there a caller? Did you see the caller? Who's the caller? Hello? Hello. This is Charlie. Who am I, speak who am I speaking with? Yes, this is Charlie. Framingham. Oh, Charlie. Hi. How are you? Charlie in Framingham? Well. From where? Framingham. Just yeah. Hi, street. Charlie. <laughs> Haven't heard Bring from you in a long time. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I am in UGAZ. I bought it the other day, and we got a pretty good pop today. And I'm wondering if you uh, if you think that it's going to close. Well, I don't know. It's uh, I'm looking at a gap somewhere there. Let me get the chart. Uh, you're talking about the gap uh, just from a few days ago. UGAZ, folks. We're looking at this is the uh, um, this is the three times long natural gas. There was a gap from the low of the 18th at 13.52. Next day, it gaps down. To, this tends to do these wild things. Gaps down all the way to um, opens at 12.87, and then it goes even lower. It goes to 12.42. And now it's kind of sideways, and it's going to 1310 today with a high of 1323. So, Charlie, let me just go to the natural gas continuous contract. It'll be very close, but it gives me a little more information because I've got it all notated. Now, when I see a very, very sharp move down in a single leg A that tries to rally and then fails and then goes to just a nominal trough B, and then tries to rally again, it says that the downward pressure was done in such an intense way that the torque to the downside and then the momentum all kicked in pretty much at the same time so that you usurped, you used up almost all the energy. And it says that pretty much there's a good chance that you're making some kind of a low to really get a reversal like an elastic band pulling back and then springing up, 
There is no time for this little H pattern and then meandering around sideways. So what I am going to say to you is, from the look of it, the MACD's turned positive, the stochastic actually had a nice positive divergence. The weekly chart is actually technically improving. This is what I'd be looking at. I don't know what you, do you have a stop in place? What would you use as a stop? I haven't used a stop yet. Um, I was probably thinking like, a, I don't know, probably, Somewhere below uh, 12.35. Okay, so now I'm getting a lot more information about it. I've got the 120-minute chart. I'll tell you exact. Can you hold on? And we'll do it as soon as we get back. Okay. Great. We've got Charlie and Framingham. There's uh, one or two towns over from where I live in Newton, Massachusetts. And we're looking at the Dow Down 52 S&Ps up three and a half. And we're looking at you gas up 0.55. And natural gas itself is up as well, of course. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're back. So, uh, Charlie, this is what I'm looking at. This is the start of an attempt of a rally. Um, just, I would not, I've got on, on UGAS itself, I've got a, a moving average here that I think is important. It's a 1335. It needs to climb above that. And it has to do it in the pattern I'm looking at. It really has to do it by the end of the day or by tomorrow at the latest. If it can't do that, it could go sideways for a little longer. So on a very short-term basis, it has 14-period uh, moving average support at 1297. It's at 1306 right now. And then the uh, nine period is at 1284. The way I'm looking at it, 
I don't know whether what kind of how wide you want to keep the stop or you want to split it up. But one part of my position, at least, I would say that if it takes out 1280, uh, 84 in the next uh, day or two, I'd probably lighten up. What you really would want at this particular point is to say, hey, you show me you've got the momentum. I want you to move higher. You move higher, and I'll split the, my position into two parts. One will have a trading stop, and the other one will be a, the, the, my core position plus a little bit of profit as a guarantee, and that's what I would try to do. But it's a little dangerous because it's coming off a low after a major thrust to the downside, so it might need just another H pattern. It might take a little time. You want speed, and speed is, for me, absolutely imperative on this trade. So you want, it's a 1302. I don't want it to pull back much today. I want it to be moving towards the high of the day at the close. I don't know if that helps you, but that's the way I would look at it. Hope that helps you. Okay, I guess Charlie's just listening, and he's, he's not there, but he's listening. Good. Thank you, Charlie, for calling. Um, so, folks, let's just do this. We're about to wrap up. You're about to go to Steve Rhodes. Then uh, you've got Dave White and Tom O'Brien. Dow's down 40. Just a real mixed market. I did re not realize that uh, MA, uh, MasterCard, which we got smashed the other day, is up 8. And Verizon, um, so uh, V is um, Visa is up four as well. And that's what I'm talking about. The Dow should be much higher, but it's got some very weak stocks. It's got some good stocks. That's why it's in a trading band. So let's watch this closely. If there is a close up 40 points or more today, I think that'll be a good sign for Friday. So have a wonderful day and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call, my newsletter, the opening call, right on the front page of TFN. Have a wonderful day. See you. Larry